lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will come my help? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. The Lord be with you. Welcome to worship online at St. Andrews. As you settle into your space to worship, I invite you to light a candle if you have one and to gather your Bible as well as some kind of bread or cracker and some juice or wine so that you also can participate in the service as we have communion together. Online you will also find the bulletin and the announcements and other things you may need for worship on the website, both on the streaming page and the home page. I have a few, a few announcements to highlight for you. First, sorry, first we are hoping to return to in-person worship and streaming on February 14th at 10 o'clock. We have just a few details to work out before that is finalized, so please look for an email confirmation this week. Also, if you are planning to come to in-person worship, please review the safety standards as we continue to have our COVID precautions and to worship together as safely as possible. February 17th is next Wednesday. And it's Ash Wednesday, and we begin Lent. So as we do that, we will have a worship service at 6 o'clock from 6 to 6.30, followed by the imposition of ashes in the narthex from 6.30 to 7.30. So you will also be able to stream the service. If we're having in-person worship, you will be welcome to come. If you want to just come for the ashes between 6.30 and 7.30 on that Wednesday evening, you are welcome to do that as well as we all seek to find a way to mark the beginning of that season. In preparation for Lent, Christianette is working on putting together a daily devotional that will be provided by video on Facebook and the website and YouTube. And the plan is to read a devotional book. So if you would be willing to come and to read one of the days to be videoed, to be a part of that online video devotional, please get in touch with Rob, or there's also a sign-up link, I believe, on the announcements, but certainly on the website. We'd love to have people to participate as a way to see people and have a variety of voices as we go through this season of Lent together. It's not even Lent, and I feel like I just talked about it a lot. So the mission spotlight for LCCM for February is soups and canned stews. And that goes especially well for this weather in February, and I think really well if you think about chili for Super Bowl Sunday, which of course is today. And we are going to talk a lot about eagles, and I'm really sorry the eagles aren't in the Super Bowl, but the lectionary is there for you. What can I say? Uh, There are some more announcements for you, and please do watch your email this week as we make a final decision about February 14th and having worship in person and streaming at 10 o'clock. Please join me in prayer as we gather our hearts for worship. Holy God, gather us in. You are our help and our hope. We pray that you would draw near to us now and that your spirit would help lift up our hearts, our minds, our souls. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Oh, pray. 
lift up our hearts and we praise God and we open our hearts and offer God all of our prayers and confessions. Would you pray with me? God of love, in the wrong we have done and in the good we have not done, we have sinned through our weaknesses and our failings. Forgive us and renew our lives through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Proof of God's amazing love is this. While we were yet sinners, while we were weak and wounded, Christ came for us and died for us so that Christ could raise us up. People of God, know that in Jesus Christ you are forgiven and lifted up to God. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Take a moment in this day to abide in Christ's peace and to pass it on in some way. Amen. Let us join together as one voice in our prayer of illumination. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Help us now to hear the word you have for us today. Amen. Our first scripture this morning comes from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 21 to 31. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told to you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he blows upon them and they wither and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me or who is my equal, says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their hosts and numbers them calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God and the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youth will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles, and they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is the word of the Lord. Let's speak to God. Good morning. So two things real quick before I get into this. First is a warning. Don't do this at home. What you're going to see is a video of Craig, Ken, Nell, and I doing something called the One Chip Challenge. 
This is spicy and it does cause pain. So be warned and don't do this at home. Two, in making this video, we exercised every precaution that we could in monitoring and being safe in this era and moment. So we have taken every precaution we could. Now, with all of that said, it's Super Bowl Sunday. And I think Super Bowl Sunday offers us a great moment to maybe reflect on the things that we lift up. And our scripture this morning from Isaiah offers us warnings about the things that we value and lift in our lives and some of the consequence of what it can be to lift something up higher than God. And in doing this one chip challenge, Craig, Ken, Nell, and I each knew the warnings of this chip, which is made from the spiciest peppers available. And it burns and it hurts, and we knew that going into it, but we still did it. And I think that's what we can get out of moments like this, is that there are warnings there, and if we don't take them, we don't heed them, there may be pain. And so my invitation to each of us this week, as we celebrate today and a good football game, hopefully, is to look at the things that we lift up. To ask ourselves, are we lifting this up greater than God? Are we walking a path that could bring us heartache later? So enjoy this moment. Enjoy the fun that we had in doing this, but also allow it to be a warning of evaluating what is of value and what we lift up. My kids were like, bye, Dad. Nice knowing you. <laughs> <laughs> One chip challenge? Here we come. Five minute featherweight, ten minute lightweight, Is thirty middleweight, one hour heavyweight. If for no other reason than... A spicy punch to the tongue, a fiery jab to the face, impaired vision from cheers, <laughs> oh, a low blow to the gut, then knockout. All right, now... Eat the okay. entire chip. Wait as long as possible before drinking or eating anything. Now I wasn't, I didn't even have some gloves. <laughs> so do you like pop the whole chip? You take a bite or what, what's the situation? I don't know, what's your preference? I put on chip smelling it first. Here we go. Uh, oh, there's the open. Oh. Well that escalated quickly, so I guess we're just gonna get right into this, right? Oh, it smells awful. Oh, did you actually eat it? How <laughs> did you actually eat it? Did you? Alexis, set timer for five minutes. Mm. It's the breathing that's tough. The, the breathing is tough? Go ahead, guys. Oh, I'm just falling. I'm gonna eat the whole chip. I'm not eating the whole chip. Are you nuts? Yes. Yes. fairness, I eat a lot of really spicy food and I enjoy it, which is why my reaction is different. But I hope this gives us each a moment to maybe pause 
and just ask that question of what it is we lift up. Thank you to Craig, Ken, and Nell for participating and putting yourselves on the line with this. Thank you, guys. With that, let's pray. Lord, I thank you for the opportunities and warnings that you give us, for the ability to look and evaluate. I ask that in this week we would look at what we lift up and allow us to see how we can lift you and serve and glorify you with all of our heart. I thank you and praise you for all you have done, are doing, and will do. In Christ's name, amen. Thank you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love. Let's be sing. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high and lift. Shining in the light of your glory, pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. I want to see. still have your Bible open to Isaiah 40, I invite you to put something in that place so you can flip back. We'll be looking at both Isaiah 40 as well as our gospel lesson today. Now I invite you to turn with me to Mark chapter 1 verses 29 to 39. Let us listen for God's word that is for us in this day. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought him to all who were sick, or possessed with demons. And the whole city was gathered around the door, and he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place. And there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, everyone is searching for you. He answered, let us go on to the neighboring towns so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. This is the word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. It's no secret that late January often brings a wave of seasonal depression for me. California girl, go figure. And a few weeks ago, I found myself in it again. As January brought one cold, gray day after another. But this year, the feeling was different, and I realized that it was combining with the COVID blues. At least, that's what I call it. I felt unable to seek joy as so many of the things that bring me joy, like having lunch with a friend or browsing through a bookstore, were all on the list of things that it's best for me to avoid right now. So it brought this antsy feeling, and yet I had very little energy. And what was on my to-do list? Plan Lent. Not only a moody liturgical season, but also my personal reminder that it's almost one year of a life full of distance and modifications. When I think about last year when everything changed, I think about Lent. That's where we were. Now my mind knew all the things to say. Spring will come again. This too will pass. Vaccines are offering a path out of our adapted COVID lives. There is finally a light at the end of the tunnel. And yet I felt numb. The snowstorm actually helped as the gray days became white and different. And as Riley said, there was lots and lots of snow. Now, my experience is mild compared to so many who suffer with this, and not just seasonally. Researchers out of Boston University have researched and found that depression has tripled among adults in the United States during the pandemic. Depression is difficult to write about, and it's, it's difficult to talk about. I'm not an expert in any way, shape, or form, but I know that it's easy to go unmentioned. It often gets hidden behind that ever-ready answer to, how are you? Who, me? I'm, I'm fine. And we hope we are, or will be, right? But we do need to name these things in our lives and to Look for connections in God's word. God doesn't want us to hide things, but to live through them and to be with them in God and with one another. Today, the prophet Isaiah connects us to a whole group of people who are stuck in exile and struggling to hope. The pandemic is mild compared to what they have been through for years and years. And in chapter 40, Isaiah begins a new section of prophecies that start out saying, Comfort, comfort, oh comfort my people. Your time is up. There are better days ahead. God will lift up every valley and bring the mountains down low so that the path before you is smooth and so much easier. And then you shall see the glory of the Lord. All of you shall see it together. This message is what they need so desperately, this light at the end of this long, dark tunnel, hope. And this beautiful image of God going ahead of them and bringing salvation. And as we come to verse 21 where we started our reading this evening or this morning, you know we're pre-recording. Isaiah responds to unheard questions and doubts and what ifs. How do we know? What about these emperors and soldiers who use their power against us every day? How does this really end? I don't know if I can believe this is really going to be over until it actually is and we are free at last and home at last. 
the doubts and the questions are real for us as well. We may not say them out loud, but we know them. What if the variants bring around another round? What if people stop wearing masks before I can get vaccinated? What if we get out of the pandemic only to find even greater problems? What if people don't come back to church? What does the end even look like? Is there a bell that says, Oli, Oli, oxen free for the whole world? What if I can't refine my footing, even after all of this is over? Isaiah addresses the doubts and the questions as he pulls up the Israelites, and we are invited along as the prophet reorients all of us to God's power. Right now and from the very beginning, God sits above the whole earth. And God stretches out those heavens, making them like a tent to be lived in. The leaders, the rulers, the princes, those who seem to have so much power, they're they're like nothing. The pandemic is even dropped down to a minor inconvenience. For to God... All the inhabitants of the earth are like grasshoppers, yet not one is missing. Do you think you could keep track of grasshoppers? It is way beyond me, but for God, he will not miss one. Have you not known the prophet cries? Have you not heard? That God is the everlasting one, the creator of all. We grow faint and we grow weary. But God does not. As we lift up our eyes to the Lord, the prophet calls for us to take hold, to grasp onto faith again, to trust in God, to wait in God. For God shall renew the strength of all who need it. We shall mount up with wings like eagles. We shall run with boundless energy as God lifts us up, restoring us, restoring our life together again. William J. Carlyle writes, Only when we feel weak and helpless, whether young or old, are we vulnerable enough to experience the powers and grace of a God who raises us up on eagle's wings. So this text is about us. It's about God and what God does with us. When all we seem to be is down. While Isaiah speaks to the whole community that is affected, Mark shows us Jesus meeting individuals and lifting them up. As we come into the gospel, Mark brings us into a scene that looks like Simon Peter and his brother Andrew bringing friends home for a good time together. It reminds me of when I would bring friends home when there was a break at college and it was fun to be in this different space and to have time together without classes and for my family to get to know them. Lots of energy and lots of laughter and lots of fun. But then in Mark, the passage takes a sharp turn as we find that someone is missing. Simon Peter's mother-in-law is sick in bed Because of this, she's separated from the rest. She's missing the time together as her body's overcome with this fever. Jesus comes to her. He takes her hand and lifts her up. One commentator links this this Greek word, engere, to Jesus' own resurrection, being raised up. 
The fever leaves her and she gets right up and cares for her guests. Could she have stayed and rested in bed? Of course. But she didn't want to be in bed anymore. She didn't want to be separated. She wanted to be with her family and her guests. And her action, serving, caring, is the same root word as deacon. She's restored in body, but also in place and purpose. Then more come to Jesus. They come because they need help, because they are sick, they are brought low in body or mind or soul. And Jesus heals them. He lifts them back up. Beloved people of God, today if you are feeling down or feeling like hope is elusive, these passages are offering you some hope to claim that are for you. But no matter what, don't hide. Ask for help. God gives us hope in God's word, but also one another. There's a line of what we can handle on our own and when we need help. And wisdom is knowing when to say, I need help. We all do. Somehow it's just so hard to say it out loud. This word of God that is for us It's not an instant cure, but a reminder that God is there. And that God is greater than anything we face. And God longs to lift us up in body, mind, and soul. Jesus came so that indeed we could be raised up just as Christ is. And as we come to God There are times where it might be instantaneous as it was with Simon Peter's mother-in-law or it might be slower like it was for the people of Israel who Isaiah was speaking to. They found themselves in the position of those who wait for the Lord, waiting for God to renew their strength and lift them up on wings like eagles. This hope is for all of us as a community of faith and for each of us, especially on the days when it doesn't feel possible to get up. God longs to lift us up as a community and as individuals. Find hope in God again and again. Find hope in the community that Christ offers us again and again. O Lord, in your grace, see us in our need. We are waiting for you with all the hope we can grasp. Amen.
website or mail a check into the church office. Please join us in our prayer of dedication. Lord Jesus Christ, receive our offering. Guide those who use it that it may help to bring fullness of life to those who live in need and long for our care. Amen. We all start on the outside, the outside looking in. This is where the grace begins. We were hungry, we were thirsty, with nothing left to give for the shape that we were in. Just when all hope seemed lost, Love opened the door for us. He said, come to the table. Come join the sinners who have been redeemed. Take your place beside the Savior. Sit down and be set free. Come to the table. Come meet this motley crew of misfits, these liars and these thieves. There's no one unwelcome here. So that sin and shame that you brought with you, you can leave it at the door and let mercy draw you near. Come to the table. Your place beside the Savior. Sit down and be set free. Come to the table. Come to the table. To the thief, to the doubt, to the hero and the coward. To the prisoner and the soldier, to the young and to the older, all who hunger, all who thirst, all the last and all the first, all the paupers and the princes, all who failed you've been forgiven, all who dream and all who suffer, all who love and lost another, all the chained and all the free, all who follow, all who lead, anyone who's let down all the lost you have been found, all who've been labeled right or wrong. To everyone who hears this song, come to the table, come join the sinners who have been redeemed. Take your place beside. Sit down and be set free. Whoa. 
sit down and be set free. Come to the table. Come to the table. Just sit down and rest a while. Just sit down and rest a while. Come to the table. That song is your invitation. This table is not for those who have made it or have it all together. It is for the wounded and the weary for those who come longing for the gifts of God and longing for God to sustain them. Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take your yoke upon me and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. You are invited to this table by Jesus Christ. Wherever you are, there is a seat for you. If you haven't already, find a bit of bread or crackers, some juice or something, even your coffee, and claim them as God's gift for you in this day. Let us gather around this table with open hearts, with all of our wounds laid bare and our prayers. O oh, holy God, you laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They shall perish, but you shall endure. You are always the same. You made us in your image and called us to be your people. If we turn from you, leaving sin and death to reign. Still you loved us, you sought us, and in Christ your grace defeated death and opened the way to eternal life. For you, O oh Lord, are above all and know that not one is missing. So, oh Lord, we give you thanks. And we praise you, O Lord, and we praise Jesus Christ, whom you sent in your fullness to be for us the way and the truth and the life, especially when we're not sure what that means. Jesus reveals your love. Jesus taught those who would hear him and healed those who believed in him, received all who sought him, and lifted them up. We pray, O oh Lord, you would meet us in this day. Lord Jesus, lift us up, especially when we most need it. Remembering, O oh Lord, your word, your hope. We take this bread and this wine from the gifts you've given us, and we celebrate with joy. The redemption won for us in Jesus Christ. Accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving as a living and holy offering of ourselves that our lives may proclaim the one crucified and buried and risen again. Holy God, we lift up our prayers to you this day the ones that are in our hearts, the ones that we have shared. We join Rosemary in praying for one who is known to her, who has ended his life. We pray, O oh Lord, for his family. We pray, O oh Lord, for comfort and peace where there is no peace and light, your light to abide. Pray, O oh Lord, for her niece as she struggles with addiction. 
these powerful things that take hold of us. Oh, Lord, in your mercy, come and help. We pray, O oh Lord, for all who are suffering from depression, from anxiety. We pray especially, O oh Lord, for those who don't feel like they have a place or a way to talk about it. O oh Lord, put a path before them to those who can help. We lift up to you all who need healing in body, mind, and soul. O oh Lord, we need you in this day and every day. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and cup, so that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. By your Spirit, unite us with all with the living Christ and with all who are baptized in his name, that indeed we may be one, indeed we may be together in every place. As this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. Help us, O oh God, to love as Christ loved. Knowing our own weakness, may we stand with all who stumble Sharing in his suffering, may we remember all who suffer. Held in his love, may we embrace all whom the world denies. Rejoicing in his forgiveness, may we forgive all who sin against us. Give us strength to serve you faithfully until that promised day when all will be lifted up through Christ, with Christ, in Christ. For, O oh Lord, you are our hope, our guide, the way and the truth and the life. Hear all the prayers we bring this day. For we bring hearts and prayers together with those precious words that you gave to us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. And after giving thanks to God, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples. He said, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is a new covenant sealed in my blood, poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. All of you drink of it. These are the gifts of God for all the people of God. Let us join in this feast and receive these gifts together. This is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the blood of Christ that was shed for you. When all who are with you have partaken of these great gifts, let us pray together. O oh God, you have so greatly loved us, 
long sought us and mercifully redeemed us. Give us grace that in everything we may yield ourselves, our wills, and our works. It's a continual thank offering to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. people of God, go into this day, into this week, into this world as those who know that God is the one who lifts us up, who has the power to overcome anything we may face. As you go, may you go with all the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Alleluia. Amen.